18 months ago, I upgraded my home internet service to the new TELUS 3 gigabits fiber internet. However, I recognized at the time there were some limitations. For one, despite my house being networked with Cat6 Ethernet cable, my mid-priced Ethernet switch that channels the internet connection around my house was limited to 2.5 gigabits per second. Also, only my computer would be able to make use of the internet service, as it was the only device with a 2.5 gigabit Ethernet controller. The only exception was that I had also installed a TELUS Wi-Fi 6E extender that provided around 1.2 gigabits per second Wi-Fi speed in certain conditions. However, I was gifted with a brand new Eromax 7 with Wi-Fi 7 capabilities by Santa during the holidays, and I was inspired to learn a bit more about networking as a relatively inexperienced enthusiast with rudimentary knowledge of networking. If you're also new to home networking, hopefully I can provide some entry-level insights that will help you with your own projects. I'd recommend watching my previous video first when I upgraded to the new 3 gigabit fiber service and come back and watch this video afterwards. In my last video, when I upgraded my home internet to the new TELUS 3 gigabit service, I had to make a couple of upgrades to the hardware in my home, including even securing TELUS's first ever Wi-Fi 6E extender. My house was already networked with Cat6 Ethernet throughout, making me more than ready for up to 10 gigabits per second when the time was right. However, I did need to make an upgrade from a 1 gigabit Ethernet switch to a more expensive 2.5 gigabit Ethernet switch in my media cabinet as a starting point. Wi-Fi 7 has a theoretical maximum throughput of 46 gigabits per second, even if in real-world scenarios it's not going to get close to that speed at this time. However, my new Eero Max 7 was my excuse to upgrade the Ethernet switch again to a much more expensive 10 gigabit switch. This would ensure it wasn't going to be the limiting factor in my home network, as well as enabling me to access that remaining 500 megabits per second of bandwidth that we'd been paying for since installation. Having said all that, a bit later in this video, I discuss why the Wi-Fi performance ended up being a little bit disappointing. I also needed to purchase one more hardware upgrade to complete the setup. My computer is no slouch, but the onboard Ethernet controller was also limited to 2.5 gigabits per second. I did contemplate upgrading the motherboard, but it dawned on me that it was much cheaper to simply buy an add-in card, or network interface card, that could unlock the full internet bandwidth via a spare PCIe slot. Luckily, add-in network cards are actually pretty reasonable, and I settled on the TP-Link TX401 10 gigabit PCIe network card. As well as my new 10 gigabit switch, the heart of my new home network for all my Wi-Fi enabled devices was the new Eero 7 Max. It's been on the market for a while, but it's always been debatable whether anyone needs to upgrade to Wi-Fi 7 using the new 6 gigahertz band. In theory, faster is better, and the Eero Max certainly has some very impressive hardware specs that achieve that goal. For a start, it features not one, but two 10 gigabit Ethernet ports, as well as two 2.5 gigabit Ethernet ports for a hardwired internet connection direct to your modem. The higher 10 gigabit capacity was going to be important for me to maximize my internet service. However, maxing out my home network is also needed for a future network drive I intend to install to support my video editing work and watching movies and shows on a private library. However, I cover this off later in the video. The Eero 7 Max also features tri-band Wi-Fi 7, which not only enables support of older, less demanding devices on the 2.4 GHz and 5 GHz bands, but also includes the new, less congested 6 GHz band for the latest high-end devices. Perhaps the coolest feature about the Eero 7 Max is it includes a feature called Multi-Link Operation, or MLO, enabled by the new Wi-Fi 7 802.11b protocol. All three bands can be combined to provide an even more reliable and low latency Wi-Fi network in your home, even despite interference from walls and other devices and similar obstacles. Devices can simultaneously send and receive data across different frequency bands and channels for a more robust performance with less dropped or compromised signal. This is especially important for owners who use very demanding applications like virtual reality and augmented reality, online gaming, bandwidth intensive remote office work and cloud computing. Of course, one of the major marketing points for Wi-Fi 7 and its eventual adoption is the theoretical speeds that it can achieve mentioned earlier. 
Having a 4.3 gigabits per second Wi-Fi network would be monstrous, eliminating the need for a hardwired network and giving consumers ultimate flexibility in their home setup for the foreseeable future. The Eero 7 Max says right on the box that the hardware is capable of these speeds. However, there are some serious caveats to that number, not least your home or office setup and the devices you use on your Wi-Fi. Another really important consideration is that the theoretical maximum would only be achieved under optimal conditions in certain configurations. For example, you might be able to get closer to that limit when using the Eero Max 7 as a backhaul for passing data within your home between your own private network devices. The definition of a backhaul for the uninitiated like myself is a private network or portion of the network comprising the intermediate links between the core network or backbone network and the small sub-networks. For example, private networks or local area networks. In my own future example, I'll be using the network backhaul to copy video files to my NAS or streaming movies from my NAS directly to my TV. I'm keen to explore the potential performance in more detail in a future video when I add the network drive to my home, but for the purposes of this video, I'm going to share my current findings in the performance chapter later on. One area I was really keen to explore more was the fact that the Eero supports the latest communication protocols for Matter, Thread and Zigbee for utilising it as a smart home hub. I'm relatively new to all three standards despite running a smart home for years. I've never really spent much time contemplating the differences and new developments. However, with the new Eero Max 7 marketed as supporting Matter, Thread and Zigbee, I thought it was time to learn. So what are Matter, Thread and Zigbee? Matter is an open standard for smart home technology that lets your device work with any Matter certified ecosystem using a single protocol. In other words, Matter devices all speak a common language that enables them to work together regardless of the manufacturer, enabling you to connect as many different brands into your home network. You can then use a single point of control such as Google Home or Amazon Alexa instead of having to switch apps. Thread is a communication technology similar but different to Wi-Fi or Bluetooth. It enables extremely fast communication between compatible smart devices. As well as its speed, it alleviates congesting your Wi-Fi network as Thread devices can speak to each other directly, plus it has a better range than Bluetooth. Devices that support Thread create their own mesh network so they enable compatible devices to extend their reach to even the furthest points of your home and still operate without slowing down. What's more, compatible thread devices don't need a single point of control. In the same way that Philips Hue requires a central hub to communicate with all the Philips Hue lights in my home, thread devices share the workload as if each device were its own hub. As a universal language for the smart home, Matter can work over thread or Wi-Fi. The Eero Max 7 also features a thread border router, which essentially means it connects a thread network to other IP-based networks, such as Wi-Fi or Ethernet, for barrierless communication. There is no need to have to communicate with third-party hubs to execute commands, greatly reducing the latency for faster interactions. Eero Max 7 also supports the much older Zigbee protocol via built-in hardware. Just like Thread, Zigbee is a network specification used to create a private network within your home using small, low-power digital radios in smart home devices. Also, just like Thread devices, Zigbee can transmit data over long distances by passing through a mesh network of intermediate devices to reach more distant ones. One benefit specific to the Eero Max 7 is that should you so desire, you can connect directly with your Hue lights via your Alexa app bypassing the Hue hub. Philips Hue uses Zigbee technology to connect to your Wi-Fi via their hub. This lets you control the Philips Hue smart lights using the Philips Hue app, both at home and from anywhere else in the world where you have an internet connection. However, you can now simply get rid of the middleman, so to speak, and control your Hue lights directly through the Amazon Alexa app, thanks to the Eero Max 7. So what's my experience been like with the new upgraded network? For a start, I'm now able to access the full 3 gigabit service I pay for with the new 10 gigabit switch and new network card in my PC. In fact, I can now access the extra 500 megabits performance I've been paying for but not utilizing. What's more, I'm well set up for future service upgrades as prices come down for fiber services and data demands increase for different applications. It is worth mentioning, as I did in my last video, that real-world usage is going to be affected by multiple other factors. 
Having a 3 gigabit internet connection doesn't mean you're going to utilize that 3 gigabit speed in everyday online usage. Limiting factors that will impact your experience will include other internet traffic, your distance from the servers providing you with the data you're trying to access, and the server's ability to serve that data at your maximum available bandwidth. Another consideration is that most home devices, even over the ethernet, are limited to 1 gigabit speeds via hardware too. Even my new 2024 Samsung TV only supports 100 megabits per second ethernet connection. As a side note, it's actually 50% faster using Wi-Fi because my Samsung TV can utilize Wi-Fi 5 with a greater higher throughput and as the TV sits directly above my new Eero Max 7. For most 4K content streamed via apps and services like YouTube and Netflix, it will only use 20 to 50 megabits per second of data. So at 100 megabits per second, most of your video content coming from streaming services will be fine. Having said that, in our household, we do make use of the three gigabits per second. We have multiple devices making hefty demands on our network, including the family streaming content and using cloud gaming services simultaneously on different devices. In other use cases, the speed of your connection will be important if you're intending to use your home network to stream your own video content from a personal server or network connected drive, which I talk about later in this video. At this point in the video, I wanted to talk about the devices that can actually use the full speed Wi-Fi 7 connection. In our house, only two Pixel 9 phones have the ability to use Wi-Fi 7 at this time. There is definitely an increase in performance on the 6 GHz band, but only really in very specific situations. The further you move away from the Eero Max 7 in my house, and the more walls and obstacles between our phones and the router, the worse the performance gets. To get the best experience, you have to have line of sight to the Eero Max 7 to get the fastest connection. This does limit the benefits for an expensive upgrade from a Wi-Fi 6 network or even a Wi-Fi 5 environment. For the same price as a single Eero Max 7, you can buy a set of cheaper mesh routers, such as the previous generations of Eero devices, to give you more uniform and equal performance throughout your home. Also, I was very disappointed to learn that despite being Wi-Fi 7 compatible, the Pixel 9 and Pixel 9 Pro XL are unable to achieve anywhere near the theoretical speeds due to a hardware limitation in the phones themselves. Both devices reportedly feature a custom Google Wi-Fi chip, and I've been unable to get faster speeds than a peak of 1.7 gigabits per second, even when right next to the Eero Max 7. Looking around online, it seems that one of the few devices that can get closer to the marketed speed of the Eero Max 7 is the OnePlus 13 phone, where other content creators see speeds in excess of 3 gigabits per second, but still not close to the maximum rated speed. It's another caveat for anyone interested in upgrading, because even with the new Eero Max 7, you won't truly be maximizing the technology just yet. Where I see the Eero Max 7 really starting to be useful for every household is when more and more consumer devices include Wi-Fi 7 compatibility. Having said all that, there has been one huge benefit for me personally to upgrade from the routers and mesh extenders supplied by my internet service provider, and that's stability. I've experienced a lot of issues trying to keep some of the devices in my household connected to the internet while using the supplied TELUS router and internet mesh devices. Our Wi-Fi enabled gas range and my iRobot vacuum cleaners would often disconnect from my old network on an infuriatingly regular basis. Since moving to the Max 7, I've had no problems at all with the connectivity. To be fair, I could have chosen one of the other major brands of less up-to-date routers for a lot less money and potentially solved the same problem. However, given that I'm using one Eero Max 7 centrally placed in my home and the stability has improved throughout my house means that this has been a great update for me and my family. So what has been my own personal experience of spending so much money and time to upgrade my home network? Well, in terms of the hardwired ethernet network, I like the fact I'm utilizing the full three gigabits per second service from TELUS now. My bottleneck has been removed with the new 10 gigabit switch and the new PCIe add-in network card for my PC. Paying for a service I really wasn't using to its fullest degree was a bit of a waste. I do actually make use of the super fast bandwidth for my video editing and consulting work for clients. The incremental cost to upgrade from a one gigabit service to the new three gigabit service was also very negligible. 
Also, I've never had an issue with latency or complaints from the family that the internet has been lackluster or frustrating when it comes to their own online activities. However, the reality is that my new network is only the foundation for more future tech projects. My upgrades will start to become really useful as I start to integrate more technology into my home. The 10 gigabit switch was pretty expensive, but given that my house was already networked with Cat6 Ethernet cable throughout, whether I was updating now or later, I would have eventually taken the plunge and bought the hardware anyway. I was also pleased that upgrading my PC was relatively inexpensive. The fact that I was able to upgrade my computer via a PCIe add-in network card rather than replacing my motherboard was satisfying. The add-in network cards cost 20% of the price of replacing the motherboard for the same performance, not to mention the cost of other upgrades that go along with replacing the motherboard too. My new superfast hardwired network has also given me the freedom to move the Eero Max 7 to locations throughout my house as I try to optimise my setup for my family's needs. The 10 gigabit connection from my fibre optic modem in my garage can reach the Eero 7 Max in any room. What's more, I'll be able to add additional units around the house in the future to enable better and faster coverage. Where I'm unimpressed right now is that I can't get close to the theoretical speeds via Wi-Fi 7 despite the marketing. As mentioned, this is mainly down to the hardware limitation, even for my flagship Pixel 9 Pro XL. As seen, it's not limited to just Pixel phones, as the superior hardware on other flagship devices only manages 3 gigabits per second at best. It feels like the Wi-Fi 7 is undeniably exciting for the purposes of home networking, but it's pretty far ahead of its time, hence the premium pricing. Not only is the hardware overkill for this current generation of technology, for all but the most demanding use cases, but even the current performance far exceeds the average contemporary use case. You can only load Instagram or TikTok so fast. So what's next for me? Well, for the longest time I've had my eye on adding a fast network storage for my video editing and backing up my footage and exports. I've been holding off the idea of adding a NAS, or Network Attached Storage, for budget reasons. Instead, I've added additional hard drives to my computer. However, that's never going to be very secure as a solution, as I recently discovered when my old PC gave up and I lost a lot of my work. With my brand new 10 gigabit Ethernet network, I now have the ability to realise my dream update. Plus, it opens up another project I've been thinking about for a while too, and that's a Plex server for movies and TV so that I can watch completely uncompressed 4K content on my Samsung TV. No more artefacts due to inferior compression of visuals, truly utilising my TV's great panel. Finally, another development I'm keeping my eye on is that TELUS in Canada has launched a new 5 gigabits internet service for almost the same money as I'm paying now. As mentioned, I'm not close to maxing out my bandwidth for my current use cases for streaming and content or work, but I know that my house is ready to go when the time is right. Thank you for watching and as always, it would be great if you were to like this video and subscribe to my channel for more content on personal technology and the connected home. Oh,